Last week, we built a mountain bike trail in my backyard, the Berm Peak Express. We built it wide and flat so we could double as an access road to the trailhead at the summit of Berm Peak. Naturally, the summit is where all our downhill mountain bike trails will begin. And today, we're making the summit even higher. The plan is to build a large six foot tall platform to roll in on. This will allow riders to get up to speed almost instantly, making better use of our limited space. This platform will be the largest wooden structure I've ever built for a video. And if you don't believe me, just ask old Ridgie. Any lumber I use on Berm Peak will need to be hauled up here by hand. In the Pacific Northwest, rot-resistant species like cedar can be harvested on site and used to build features. Not out here. In the southern Appalachian Mountains, very few trees would be considered rot-resistant. So, treated lumber is the most resilient option for outdoor projects. But the chemicals in this stuff are nasty, so I'm working on obtaining some rot-resistant lumber from a local mill to experiment with in future videos. Still, it'll all need to be hauled up here too. Like the bike wash station, we're building what is basically a deck. But this time, we need to dig much bigger holes and contend with roots. The reciprocating saw has been a lifesaver in these tight spots where swinging a machete just isn't possible. Since continually exposing the saw to dirt and moisture may shorten its life, I'm interested to see by how much. Since we're on a slope, it's very difficult to map these holes to my plan, so digging them wider than needed is important. Wide holes allow for adjustment later on, and this is crucial since I don't know what I'm doing. You would think that building a rectangle would be simple, but this is a rather large rectangle on an uneven surface. So I'm using temporary braces to hold everything in place, while trying to position 12 foot 6 by 6s to a reasonable degree of accuracy. With each adjustment, I get closer to a world where this structure is square, level, and plumb. Okay, so we're installing joist hangers again, but it's going a lot smoother this time. In the bike wash video, I expressed how difficult these were to install, and a bunch of you guys pointed out that there's an easier way. Just position the hanger, bang on the tab near the top, and then install your fasteners. That's how the hanger was designed to be used, but I never knew. Thanks to you guys, I get things done quicker and have leftover time for things like shovel cannons. With all our joists installed, it's time to turn this thing into an actual platform. These deck planks are a lot like the ones from the bike wash, but way cheaper. They have warps, bows, and knots in them that make them undesirable for pretty home improvement projects. But for the flight deck, nobody will know the difference. I waited to get this far on the build to prune this tree because I couldn't reach it before. But it's nice to have the rest of it encroaching on the deck just a little bit.
with a proper surface for standing and riding on. The flight deck is now officially a deck. You know what that means. Yeah, it's six and a half feet. So that's, that's pretty good huck to flat, for sure. Some trial skills would have made that huck to flat a tad easier. Now let's move on to making this thing usable. You may have noticed these posts extending much higher than the structure. They're for a railing. To stiffen the railing, we're adding another post in the center. That'll get fastened to the beam with lag screws and we'll cut a hole in the plank so it looks like it belongs there. Now given the purpose of the flight deck, it may seem pointless to add a railing to it. But with multiple riders congregating up here, I want something for them to back up against we can assume they'll be facing the ramps. So this reduces the risk of someone slipping backwards off the platform. But there's another reason for the railing. That's the only side that's getting a railing. These other sides, I'm gonna build ramps going off of to access trails. If somebody falls over here, you know, they might get hurt, but over here, I'm gonna be storing tools. So they might fall on an upright shovel or something like that. All our trail building tools will be stored right here at the trailhead. So we're building a rack. These pipes are made from leftover material from the shovel cannon. But in this much smaller configuration, they can only shoot gardening trowels. But we're not finished with the flight deck just yet. We still need an easy way to get bikes on top of it. This 12 foot ramp will be as long as the flight deck itself, so it makes for a really mellow climb to the top. A lot of ramps like these contain nubs to use as footing when hiking up, but this ramp needs to be smooth so we can use it for riding down to a future trail. Of course, that will require some landscaping. For now, we're using the underside of the flight deck to store some lumber and the Endurbaro version 2, aka the shovel cannon. But I may do a little more with this spot should the need arise. And with that, I think we're off to a pretty good start with the flight deck. It's tempting to point downhill and start cutting trail tomorrow, but this is the only acreage I have. We need to get it right the first time and make the most of this space. So next week, we're gonna summon the Brain Trust, take a serious walk through these woods, and come up with a plan to turn this place into a mini bike park. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time. Oh, that was a tough landing. <laughs> <laughs>